Hi, this is Gary with MacMost Now. On today's episode, let's take a look at some of the new features of iTunes 9. So Apple has done a really good job of highlighting some of the new features of the iTunes Store like the extras on movies and TV shows and also the new LP feature. And also of course the redesign of the store itself. But beyond that, there's actually some functional differences in how iTunes works both in the store and in managing your music. Let's go and take a look at each of these new little features. So the browsing area is now on the left side here and it defaults to just give you artists. So you can go ahead and click on different artists on the left and it will instantly jump to that individual artist there. You can go up to the top and select all. Now if you miss having it at the top of the screen you can still set it there. You can go to view column browser and you can set it to on top. And then you get back what you had before. And it defaults here to genres, artists, and then albums. In addition to that you can go and add more. So for instance I can go over here and add composers to that as well. Now if I go and do the left browser it's going to go back to just showing artists but I can go ahead and add something here so I can say add genres, artists, and albums like that all on the left to make it easier to browse. So you kind of have the best of both worlds. The old way of doing it, the a new way of doing it, and the ability to go and really set what it is you see in the browser here. So when you go ahead and sync an iPod or iPhone with iTunes 9 you get a lot of different features here. You get the same summary screen with same options, the iPod Nano here now has voiceover. But when you go to one of the media screens, like music, it looks very different. Here on the music screen, you can select uh, entire music library or select a playlist, that kind of thing. But you also can go ahead and just select from this list of playlists. You can also select from a list of artists, check one or more of them off. And also, you can select from genres, and it will sync those songs to it. Now, in movies and in TV shows, you've got a similar kind of thing. You can choose to sync TV shows, select a show on the left, and actually select the episodes to sync. Also for podcasts you have a similar thing where you can actually go ahead and sync automatically all unplayed or recent episodes. But you can also go ahead and uh, pick a podcast and choose exactly which items to sync or just check off to sync them all. Same sort of thing for iTunes U. Even for photos from your iPhoto library you can choose to sync like before, events from the last few months, that kind of thing. You can choose to include your videos and have full resolution videos, uh, photos rather, on there. Also you can choose by album, event, and even faces. The cool thing is in a lot of these you've got search capability so you can search for something in there. So for instance under artist if you want to go and search for something like that there you go and automatically find it if you have a long list of artists. So when you go to sync an iPhone or iPod Touch you get this additional screen for applications. Now here what's interesting is you can go ahead and scroll through the applications on the left and decide which ones you want to sync. You can also search. You can search by category. You can sort by date. All sorts of things. Then on the right here you actually have it views of all the different screens you have on your iPhone featuring all the different apps. You can go and arrange them now using this screen and it will then transfer that arrangement to the iPhone. So you can just do whatever you want and drag and drop all these to different screens like that. Go back and forth. So you can kind of arrange them to your heart's content until they're just like you want them to be. So now you can build smart playlists that are a little bit more complex. Create a new smart playlist. And then, like before, you can enter in multiple bits of criteria. So you can choose something like uh, having genre match something and go ahead and then have the date added. In the last year. You can also go ahead and choose here that you want to nest some things. So you can say the genre contains rock um, and any of these following rules and nest a couple things under it like that. So you can create little programs really that create smart playlists that can do some interesting things. So there's a new section under Genius for Genius Mixes. Now unlike the rest of Genius which is really there to sell you more music, Genius Mixes takes some of your existing music and creates these little radio stations here. Group songs together in what it thinks are logical ways and then gives you the opportunity to basically just start playing something. 
So one of the big new features in the iTunes Store is that there's no more shopping cart. Now there's wish lists. So for instance you can go ahead and search for some music and then once you do you can go ahead and add it to your wish list by clicking on this little down arrow next to the buy button and you can go ahead and add to a wish list like that. And then when you go back home you can go ahead and click on your wish list here on the right and you can see different items here that's in your wish list. Then you can go and also basically buy all here and buy the entire wish list. But you also kind of have this like personal little uh, iTunes store homepage. You can actually buy the individual items off that screen. What it isn't though is it isn't a wish list that other people can view and buy you presents. This is just your personal wish list. There are also a few socially oriented uh, advances in the iTunes Store. One is if you select this little tab here, you notice you have the ability to share on Facebook, share on Twitter. Uh, basically, it just sends a message to either Facebook or Twitter using your account uh, that you like this album and you want to recommend it to a friend. You can also click on Tell a Friend and fill out a form to send an email. These are all just pretty basic notification features, though. Nothing more deep than that. Another feature is the ability to be able to gift an album to somebody. Go ahead and do that if you see the gift this album appear when you click on the little down arrow. And then you can go ahead and specify who it is you want to send this gift to. So there's a look at some of the new features in iTunes 9. There's also some minor changes here and there as you'll find as you play with it. Until next time, this is Gary Rosenzweig with MacMost Now.